Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between Russia and Ukraine. We have entered day 224 in what could become global Armageddon, according to President Joseph Biden. If you have listened to some of the statements uh, within the last 24 hours that are coming out of the White House, well, specifically not the White House, but, uh, but from Biden himself, such comments as uh, closer to Armageddon since the Cuban Missile Crisis. How long have I been talking about that? Now he's finally saying it. And he's saying that not because he's a decision maker, because he is not a decision maker. He is more of a, a figurehead that is receiving information. And when questioned by reporters, he is regurgitating, uh, partly by mistake, on what he is hearing in what, uh, what limited thought processes uh, he has. Uh, he is then regurgitating them to the oppress, in all probability, uh, by mistake. There's also been some talk about, uh, well, it's, it's not talk. Um, there is a significant U.S. military activity on the eastern uh, coast of the United States and the west coast of the United States as well, and uh, operations being conducted uh, in Alaska. Uh, by U.S. Uh, uh, naval assets and uh, aircraft, apparently uh, looking uh, for uh, Russian uh, nuclear attack boats. Uh, so something is going on, both in, on the East Coast and the West Coast, that, that really has the attention of the, uh, of the U.S. military. We know this for certain. Something has spooked the U.S. military in regards to uh, Russian nuclear attack submarines and or uh, ballistic uh, missile submarines. Probably uh, the, uh, the ballistic uh, uh, missile boats are, are much further off the coast than uh, some of the, uh, the Russian uh, nuclear attack boats. So uh, now the question is, is, what is the DEFCON level of uh, the United States right now? Well, the voice of reason and the Military and Foreign Affairs ne Network, uh, we've gone to DEFCON too. And uh, if, if you are near a, uh, a major military base, you may want to uh, bring up a nuclear effects calculator and just kind of see where you're at in regards to a possible nuclear strike and just prepare with reason. Have an ability to get away from something you feel could be targeted because unfortunately we're, we're operating in this environment right now. What is the U.S. DEFCON level? Well, we don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of go over that. There are five levels uh, to the uh, DEFCON system. It's the uh, defense condition system. So a level of readiness that, uh, depending on what is happening in the world, uh, the uh, U.S. military uh, uses. So the, the lowest level of readiness is DEFCON 5, or are called a fade-out. It's the lowest state of readiness, uh, what you would define as normal peacetime readiness. The next level is a DEFCON 4, which is a level double take. And that's increased intelligence watch and above normal readiness. And then you also have some enhanced security measures as, as well. Next, you have Roundhouse or DEFCON 3. Um, that increases force readiness above required for normal readiness. The uh, U.S. Air Force is ready to mobilize within 15 minutes. 
Uh, my guess, we're sitting at DEFCON 3 right now. Uh, Def, DEFCON 2, fast pace. And uh, that is preconditioning for nuclear war. Uh, armed forces ready to deploy and engage in less than six hours. And then finally, DEFCON 1, cocked pistol. Cocked pistol. And that is when the uh, Department of Defense believes that nuclear war is imminent or has already begun. So you can't go any higher than, uh, than Cocked Pistol or DEFCON 1. So uh, very, very concerning issues going on right now. Uh, it, it does appear that uh, the, uh, in all probability, the Russians have moved assets. They've probably moved both tactical nuclear uh, assets and strategic nuclear assets as well. My guess is uh, one protects the other, so to speak. So if the, if the Russians were going to uh, conduct a, uh, a one or, or multiple uh, tactical nuclear strikes, then obviously it would also have to put its strategic forces on alert too, in case of some some sort of uh, of, of misunderstanding or, or counter strike by uh, uh, the United States or or some other European uh, partner. But uh, that's where we're sitting right now, and um, it is not uh, something coming out of the uh, the uh, the tabloid press. It is this is not that. Folks, this is real, and um, it's concerning. Now, does that mean that ultimately uh, that is the direction that we are we are going to head and actually enter this quote unquote Armageddon, as uh, Mr. Biden has stated? Most likely not. I, I mean, hopefully, hopefully. The adults come to the table and uh, start to look at this, and uh, and and ultimately make some decisions that um, can uh, put us in a different direction. But unfortunately, I'm not really seeing that happen right now, and uh, especially with the uh, uh, the attack on the uh, Nord Stream pipeline. Um, let's talk about that real quick. So basically, Nord Stream runs from way up here, and it goes through the Baltic Sea, and it comes down here, and this is where, uh, in this area here, is where Nord Stream was, uh, was blown up. So in all probability, a, uh, a submarine launched a special forces and then the special forces or or some sort of a submarine launched uh, drone system may have been involved in all in all probability uh, I, I believe it was uh, US Navy seals that uh, conducted that operation and blew up the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipeline and uh, if you look at some past uh, Biden comments about Nord Stream 1 and 2 uh, going, uh, just before the war started. He basically, and I think by mistake, because he was told this and he regurgitated it, that uh, essentially the United States was going to was going to take it out. And I think we've, we, we did, the United States did that. And um, I, I think it's fairly asinine to think that the Russians blew up their own pipeline and I mean it, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense I, I, I get why some of those are saying the Russians may have done it in, in, in the rationale but where it was blown up and how it was blown up 
it really looks like the uh, modus operandi of the uh, of the Navy SEALs. It, it really does. Anyway, so again, things are not cooling off. Things are getting getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and uh, it looks like, which is which may be a good thing it, it, in terms of, of preventing an escalation, a tactical nuclear escalation, that the Russians may have things in hand uh, on the western bank of the Dnieper River. In terms of uh, uh, preventing the, the loss of its hold on the western bank of the Dnieper River. But more importantly, uh, at, at a certain point, and, and it continues to, to look like that as we speak, that some of these Russian forces could be encircled and uh, forced to, uh, to surrender. And um, that is, again, something that could lead to some sort of uh, tactical nuclear escalation. Uh, I think I, I, the first component of any sort of nuclear escalation would be a test. I could be wrong on that, and um, we could see something different, a direct tactical nuclear strike, but ultimately I think some sort of test would occur first that would get the attention of the, uh, the Western world and, and uh, what, what that would, would, would the, uh, the strategy behind this use of, of nuclear weapons would be the Russians saying, we're, we're, the gloves are coming off. But at the same time, the Russians could do a lot of other things before they they get to that step, and I haven't seen it yet. That's what's strange about this conflict. We're not seeing the Russians entirely take the gloves off in terms of capability and what they what they could do. But uh, we'll continue to watch, report, and uh, bring you more content uh, as we uh, get it. Uh, again, watching things very very closely in terms of uh, the behind-the-scenes activity, which uh, there's not a lot of talk about some of these, uh, these, these uh, U.S. Uh, naval and air operations off the East Coast, West Coast, near Alaska, but it is, uh, it's definitely occurring. Something's, th something's got the attention of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the Navy and Air Force. But we'll continue to watch that and uh, continuing to watch this, uh, this very, very intense war taking place uh, between Russia and uh, Ukraine. Again, thanks for joining us. Uh, more to come. Uh, and as always, have a good day.